One of Minnesota's top leaders throughout this crisis is the Department of Health's Director of Infectious Disease, Chris Ayersman. I spoke with her earlier this morning. Take a look. And joining us this morning is Chris Ayersman, the Director of Infectious Disease for uh, the Minnesota Department of Health. Thank you so much for giving us your time this morning. Oh, happy to do it. All right. Let me ask you about the cases because we have had an alarming spike in cases here in Minnesota. We have one of the fastest rising rates in the country of COVID. Are you concerned? Um, certainly, yes, we are taking it very seriously, but we also know that we have been testing in in areas that we expect to find cases. So we've been testing in long-term care facilities and we've done a lot of testing in plants and manufacturing where we know that there have been cases. So our high positivity rate is somewhat expected. That's not to say that we're not following it and that it isn't, um, that we don't have some concerns, but we are testing in areas where we expect to see cases. So we're not just testing randomly across the population and seeing these high rates. We're testing in places where we know there are cases. And when we talk about testing, I, I think we need to mention the total tests from yesterday, more than 8,000 tests. Uh, obviously a, a record, the governor has talked about that, you've talked about it, uh, everyone has talked about it on those calls. Um, this is obviously going the right direction. Right, we, you know, we've been ramping up capacity and we're taking advantage of that capacity and we want anyone who has symptoms of COVID to go in and get tested and take advantage of the testing that's available. Okay, and now that's something, because a lot of Minnesotans, and I think especially men are probably, well, I've got maybe a slight fever or, or a cough. Should they go in as soon as possible? Yes, we would recommend that if you have, you know, any symptoms that you do go in. And if you go to the department's website, we do have, you know, information okay. on things you can look at. But we do know that some individuals have more mild symptoms. And so it's definitely worth getting tested if you do have any symptoms. All right. One of the, the saving graces of COVID appeared to be that it didn't affect young children or children. And now that seems not to be the case. I know you put out an appeal on Friday saying this new disease, this new viral disease, uh, this mystery illness is affecting children. Have you found any cases here in Minnesota? Um, at this point, we're still waiting to hear from providers, but we did ask that they report to us if they had any cases or any situations that they felt met the definition of this multi-organ inflammatory um, situation in children. And I do want to be clear that we're looking at 21 and under. So sometimes when we say children, people think of, you okay. know, preschool, but it is, it is children and, and young adults. All right. Um, and what are the what are the symptoms here that people should look out for? Because this has been deadly in in a number of cases. There, yes, there have been some deaths associated with it. It was it was identified in the United Kingdom, and then they also saw it in New York. And so we want to make sure that we have alerted providers and that they are letting us know if they're seeing anything like this. And what we're what they'd be looking for is in um, children who have tested positive for COVID, if they're seeing, you know, obviously fever, which is right. ex to be expected, but then also shock, multi-organ involvement, um, elevated inflammatory markers. And sometimes these kids can have some similar symptoms to uh, what's called Kawasaki disease, which can include, you know, inflamed lymph nodes of the neck, as well as sort of a chapped uh, raw lips, mouth, and throat. So we're asking you know providers to be alert for this, and so we'll be monitoring for it in Minnesota. It is rare. I think it's important to note that it's been identified, but it is rare. But we want to make sure that we're not missing anything here. Okay, and that's great information because I had not heard until you just said that that it is also teens up to the age of 21. Yeah, so we so when we talk about children, I just want to be clear that if you're um, 18, 19, you, you may not appreciate being lumped into the category of children. So it's it's um, up through age 21. All right. Well, Chris Ayersman, thank you so much, and thank you for being always available to talk to us. I know you have so much going on. Uh, we really appreciate it. Oh, happy to do so. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs>